Okay, in this problem we want to find an antiderivative cap f for f of x equals x to the two-thirds minus x to the three-halves, having the additional property that cap f of 64 is 3 times 4 fifths times 1 fifth. Okay, uh, so the first thing that we have to do is to take the antiderivative for x to the two-thirds minus x to the three-halves. And so what we're going to do is take an antiderivative of x to the two-thirds and then subtract an antiderivative for x to the three-halves power. Taking derivatives works that way, so taking antiderivatives will work that way as well. That is, that uh, they work nicely with the subtraction. Okay, so I'm going to use the um, power rule in reverse to take the derivative, antiderivative of x to the two-thirds. So first thing is add 1 to the power. 1 plus 2 thirds will give me 5 thirds. And then I want to divide by the new power, so I would divide by 5 thirds, which is equivalent, right, the same as multiplying by 3 fifths. So instead of having a complex fraction, when I divide by 5 thirds, I'm just going to multiply by 3 fifths. And then subtract. And then I'm going to do a similar thing for x to the 3 halves. I'm going to add 1 to the power. That will give me x to the 5 halves. 3 halves plus 1 will give me 5 halves. And then um, divide by the new power, which since it's a fraction, I'm just going to do something equivalent and flip it over and multiply. And then don't forget the uh, plus c on the end. So that's the most general antiderivative for this function that we had. Um, but what we want is a particular one. We, the one that we want is when we plug in 64 into cap f, we want this value right here. So what we're going to do is just take the form that we got for the most general antiderivative, and we're just going to go ahead and do what that tells us to do, and that is we're going to take and plug in 64 for, for x. So that's what we get when we do that. And then we know that uh, f of 64 is equal to this value here. So we're just replacing f of 64 with that value there. And so what we get is this big, long equation involving uh, c. And so what we want to do now is just solve for c and figure out what that would have to be. So the first thing that we want to do is to just simplify this. And without a calculator, um, what you would want to do is just try and express 64 in terms of a third power. And why third power? So that I will it will cancel uh, this 3 down in the bottom of 5 thirds out. And sure enough, 64 is 4 to the third power. Likewise, over here, in this one, we want to express 64 as a square, perfect square, be because I have a 2 in the denominator here. And that will be make things easier if I can do that. You can also just use your calculator to simplify out what this would be. But um, based on the format of the answer, it's probably easier if you do it this way. So, so 64 is 8 squared, and so that's why I have those two values in there. And so the advantage to that is I have, if I have a base and a power raised to another power, I multiply those two powers together. And 3 times 5 thirds comes out to be 5. Likewise, over here, I have a base and a power raised to another power. So in that situation, you would, to simplify it, you would multiply the powers together. So 2 times 5 halves comes out to be a 5 there. All right, so I've simplified it a little bit. And just looking at, at what I have, I noticed that uh, this stuff here over on the left-hand side and this expression, those are identical. And you can see it if you multiply that out a little bit better. I could multiply all this stuff out and get a couple of big numbers, but again, trying to match the answer to one of the answers uh, on this question, um, what I'm going to do 
is this looks pretty close. So first thing, then I'm going to subtract three fifths times four to the fifth power from both sides. And when I do that, I get zero on the left side, and negative two fifths a to the fifth plus c over on the right side. And then I will just add two fifths a to the fifth on both sides and that will give me that c is equal to two fifths times eight to the fifth power. So going back to the original form of the antiderivative cap f it looked like this and we determined that c was two fifths times eight to the fifth power and so that's um, matches one of the answers there on uh, question four.